It was the fall of 2013. Everything was looking great for Marvel Studios, and Disney and Marvel announced a crazy partnership deal. One which would see them unite with Netflix, the titan of streaming, and provide us with a brand new outlook to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. For the first time ever, we were going to be expanding into TV faster than ever before. But not everything was as good as we thought. Join me for this video as we look at the rise and fall of the Marvel Netflix TV series. After the huge success that was Marvel's The Avengers, they were quickly looking to expand into TV. Of course, the first TV series based on this would go to ABC, and it was known as Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. With Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. being a huge success, other TV shows that were potentially in development and confirmed by Jeff Loeb were The Incredible Hulk, a prequel TV series, aka Jessica Jones, and Cloak and Dagger, along with Mockingbird. We fast forward to summer of 2013, specifically in September, and we got the announcement that Marvel's Agent Carter would be coming to ABC. And right around that time, rumors started that Marvel was looking to expand further than anybody thought possible. From the rumors that hit the internet, there was going to be four to six TV series pitched at once to whichever station wanted to pick them up. In October of 2013, we would learn that Marvel was prepping 60 episodes total, which would be part of this complete package, and they were pitching it to the likes of Amazon, WGN America, and Netflix. Fast forward a month and a huge monster deal was landed. Netflix officially signed on to produce four based series on this live action concept. Daredevil, Jessica Jones, Iron Fist, and Luke Cage, which would all lead to the ultimate team-up titled The Defenders. Right after that announcement, CEO of Disney Bob Iger went on a Q&A and he said that Daredevil, Luke Cage, Iron Fist, and Jessica Jones may appear in future films if these shows are successful. On top of that, they did offer other outlets such as Disney XD and ABC the possibility, but they could not handle this much TV show that consisted of superheroes per week. So ultimately, the deal with Netflix was made. It was also announced that this venture would cost Disney and ABC $200 million in finances to produce these five TV series. And yes, while the shows were not going to ABC, they were still actually produced by the same exact people. Netflix was just going to be the distributing factor. And this is where the problems should have been apparent right from the get-go. Disney is putting all of their money into this and their production from ABC. Netflix is just sitting back and taking this exclusive content and getting more and more subscribers. Along with that, it was also mentioned that these shows are part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, so down the road, there was potential to explore that even further, as I mentioned before, with appearances in films. Now, after the initial announcement, everybody was excited for when production would start and exactly how many shows would we be getting. We knew the initial run of five, but there was plenty of rumors that they were going to be expanding this down the road. It didn't take too long before July 2014, where the first season officially started to shoot. Charlie Cox was cast as Daredevil, and we found out that the series would be the first one to premiere in April of 2015. With a second season following in March of 2016, and a third season in October of 2018. Now keep those dates in mind as we keep talking about these series. Daredevil will arguably be the one that's the most well received by fans having the most consistent reviews and fanfare. The second series that would follow would be Jessica Jones, and while not as well received as Daredevil, this still got a lot of fans excited, critics certainly loved it, and that took off to a great start as well. Also having three seasons just like Daredevil. The first season came out on November of 2015, the second season on March of 2018, a three-year gap which was only held over by the Defenders being in the middle of it. But this is where things start to go downhill. The remaining two TV series were Luke Cage and Iron Fist. Luke Cage was an interesting one considering there was a lot of anticipation for him. And he certainly had build-up since he appeared in the first season of Jessica Jones. And while many people will agree that the first half of the first season was absolutely outstanding, that's when it starts to go downhill and the reviews absolutely start to tank. 
His first season would come in 2016, followed by a second season in 2018. The second season fared far worse in reviews, and the boost from the Defenders definitely did not help, but we'll talk about that in a minute. And finally, we come to the final standalone series. This was of course Iron Fist. This is the one that had a lot of anticipation. The immortal Iron Fist was constantly mentioned as a basis for where this series was going to draw inspiration from. Unfortunately, it did none of that. It's literally one of the worst reviews comic book TV series of all time. It did somehow get renewed for a second season, although it was a reduced episode count, and not to mention it completely revamped what they were trying to do, but it was a little too late. Now, in the meantime, while all of these shows were running, the Defenders would be the one to unite everybody after their first initial season. Daredevil, while that was a great setup, Jessica Jones didn't really do much to contribute anything to it. Luke Cage, largely standalone other than a few mentions, and Iron Fist literally had the entire backbone on itself trying to build up everything towards it. Everything felt rushed the villain was completely wasted, and the hype was all but destroyed after that series came out. Along with this, Netflix was able to talk to Marvel and expand upon with another series with The Punisher, who first appeared in the second season of Daredevil, and to much delight, he was accepted automatically by pretty much everybody. The Punisher would go on to get two complete seasons, and of course his appearance in the second season of Daredevil, and more or less be the only one that actually wraps up his complete story. By early 2019, every single series was cancelled. In less than four years, we went from the announcement of something that was literally unbelievable at the time, which provided thousands of jobs and a great economy boost to New York, to Netflix not wanting to distribute these anymore, to everything falling apart. Now, if you kept up with this, you probably understand already what exactly led to the ultimate downfall of the Netflix deal. At first, Disney definitely wanted to use this as testing the waters for what their characters were capable of on a streaming service. So they are in part to blame, but also the deal that Netflix gave them was kind of to be expected. They were not going to let these characters go anywhere else. They wanted these characters locked down, and of course they had distribution rights, which means that it came down to them to when they would greenlight another series and when they would put it out. And as I mentioned while we were covering them, some seasons took two years to get out, if not a year and a half. Netflix not actually owning these characters figured that you don't even really need to advertise them. So subsequently, every season that was coming out was hidden away behind more Netflix originals that they fully owned. When Daredevil Season 3 came out, you were lucky if it was even mentioned in the recommended. You had to know it was out to be able to search for it to be able to find it. The Punisher Season 2, I literally saw no advertising for it at all. So ultimately, when it came down to this deal, everything was going against it. Netflix was never going to hang on to these characters forever, because Disney, as everybody knew, was ready to get onto the streaming game and make their own competitor service. Disney, at the same time, needed to test the waters for exactly how viable is the streaming future, and their best insight into this was going to be giving Netflix, the leader in that market, an outlet of Marvel characters where they could report those numbers to them to make sure that this is something that they could sink further money into. Ultimately, it was two rival companies working against each other at the same exact time. But they more or less had to do this because both of them needed what the other one had. Netflix at the time, when the deal was announced in 2013, did not have as many original shows as it does now. Disney was not even considering going into the streaming market. So from both perspectives, this was a test guinea pig. Once everything was said and done, we saw both sides start to comment on exactly what happened, and as we found out, it was a Netflix decision not to continue these series. The reason being that Netflix wanted less episodes of each series, but the same amount of budget and quality and effort put in by ABC. On top of that, they wanted to get back to the renegotiating table and try to get more leeway for future Marvel characters. But at the same time, if you remember what I said earlier, 
due to the deal that had to be struck, Disney could not use any of these characters for two years after their last appearance on Netflix. So ultimately, the two sides could not come to an agreement. Netflix decided to pull the plug on everything, and now we await to see what the future holds. And as the interest has been expressed before, it looks like Hulu could be the future of what was once a too-good-to-be-true deal.